Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the October 18th, 2021 Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board meeting. Uh, I see we have a quorum, so we're all set to go. Uh, the posted meeting agenda, I believe, stands as it was posted. I don't think there have been any changes to it. Um, have you all received Jim's meeting notes and have you all had a chance to review them? Yes. Yes. Uh, could I have a motion to accept them? So moved, Edna. Second? Second, Kathy. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed or any abstentions? <laughs> Aries. I believe you've also received the October 4th minutes. And yes. assuming that you had a chance to review them, any changes or corrections? Well, this is Jim. Well, this is Jim. I just had one. I, I had one addition. I emailed Gretchen just about adding a note about um, turning over the um, discussion of the finalization of the garage to HAPAC for final kind of review and approval. Just making a note of that in the notes. I didn't see it in there. So, just, oh. Gretchen, are you? Gretchen, you're okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Could I have a motion to accept? The October four minutes with the correction or the addition. I'll moved, Edna. Moved by Edna. Second. Second, Joe. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Melody, I'm going to abstain. I'm just going to abstain due to not being at the meeting. The meeting. Okay. Uh, the motion carries with one abstention. Thank you very much. Correspondence and announcements. A, a couple of things I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, the first for people listening in or for applicants who may be coming before us, we don't yet have the schedule for 2022 out, but um, at the request of board members, uh, starting in 2022, we will be starting the planning board meetings at six o'clock rather than 630. Uh, for the remainder of the year, we will stick with the schedule that we have now starting at 630. But um, everybody's in favor. And so look forward to that in the new year. Uh, the other thing I'd like to tell you about a little bit is that I had the opportunity to participate in a uh, Zoom call, a presentation by Amtrak regarding the train station in Rhinecliffe. For uh, several years now, Amtrak has been working closely with uh, our town supervisor and others uh, in the development of a plan that will bring the train station into ADA compliance. Um, that project uh, re resulted in them taking a look at the train station itself and um, adding into their planning upgrades and improvements, restoration work, to overall general maintenance and repairs. About a one and a half hour presentation uh, it was very comprehensive. There were many, many people on there from Amtrak representing all levels of their operation and including people from the National Park Service and others. It is on the National Register. And so the train station, all the work will be in compliance with the Secretary of the Interior standards. Um, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. I had expected by now to get a a uh, copy of the presentation which they filmed, which they videoed. I haven't gotten it yet. I will follow up on that. It was my intention to send it on to you so you could all take a look at it. Uh, I don't have a timeline. I don't know when the work will begin, um, but there will be um, reconfiguring of the, uh, the parking lot at the upper level. Uh, right on the street. There will also be improvements and reconfiguring of the parking lot down below, which is where you go in. Um, all of the interior will be made ADA compliant. Ramps uh, taking people down. The elevators, there will be two elevators in the end, both of them, ref you know, the one refurbished another. So you'll be able to take an elevator from ground level up and um, parking up. Um, the, there will be ADA compliant bathrooms, both male and female. Um, and what I found very interesting is that they'll be raising the platform itself 48 inches 
so that people will be able to enter the train at grade as opposed to stepping up to get onto the train so that the you know people with disabilities will be able to just get onto the train i'm sure it's a multi-year project um but um, i was very impressed and as soon as i get additional information that i can forward on to you i will do that so you can catch up anybody have any questions about that Okay, um, that being said, I guess we're ready for new applications. Uh, the first being Josh Aronson, 26 Morton Road, site plan review and special use permit for the construction of a studio caretaker apartment. And I'm not sure who's here for Mr. Aronson. I, I am, I'm here, I'm Josh, and my architect Peter Sweeney is here as well. Well, hello, Josh. Why don't you tell us what you'd like to do? Uh, all right, Peter, shall I just describe it? Sure, I yeah. mean, either way. Sure. Uh, well, we live uh, at, at 26 Morton Road and we've been here, we built the house 15 years ago. And uh, as we get older, we recognize uh, we're slowing down a little bit. And uh, um, uh, I'm uh, a bit of an artist and I do uh, painting and I make ceramics. And my wife is an artist as well as being a violinist. Um, uh, and she's got some health issues, unfortunately. So all that combined, we need a building that will allow us both to work. And, uh, and, and so we have two art studios on the ground floor, side by side. And above, we have a caretaker unit, which uh, we're thinking someday in the future may be a caregiver unit. But uh, essentially, it's a 2,000 foot building, uh, two floors. We sort of pushed it into the woods. Um, so uh, there's no... Uh, you know, impact view wise from the street at all and virtually none from the river, the across the river. And uh, it's a very subdued building and designed just to be for our uh, personal work and for a caretaker. That's essentially it. Okay. Jim, you had some comments, I believe. Um, I had a few notes actually. I really didn't have any, um, I didn't really see any issues, I don't think. Um, the uh, the proposal for the accessory uh, structure is under the maximum permitted by code. Uh, we have been provided with a letter uh, from the applicant stating that they won't use toxic chemicals in the um, in the building, which was something we had discussed at the uh, pre-conference meeting. Um, they did map um, where the wetlands are. Um, I was just going to ask quickly how that was. It was said it was mapped using Dutchess County data. I'm assuming that's Dutchess County parcel access data. Um, I wasn't really sure, but it is uh, several hundred feet from the wetland, you know, 200 plus feet from the wetland uh, that's shown on here to the edge of the building, which is well beyond our 100 foot buffer. Um, for septic, they're gonna use the existing tank, um, an existing septic system. So they'll need review and approval from the county health department. Um, they did do three archeological shovel tests. Uh, we'd had discussed that a phase 1A and 1B might be necessary. They, so they did the archeological tests and did not find anything of concern through that. And then the only other um, comment I had, and I don't know, maybe Michael and Melody will have to just discuss it, is that this is a flag lot and there's actually a, a lot in front of this. And I think I remember there being a history as to why that was there on that part of Morton Road. Um, so I didn't know if it would be worth just quickly explaining that or not. Is it something about a setback in the past or preservation of Morton Road? Or am I misremembering? No, no, no. I did that when I bought the property. Oh, yeah, when it was okay. a 20 acre property, I did it as I bought it. I just separated it out. Uh, okay. So I'd have a, a future building lot or if I needed to sell it off one day. So I, I did that. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, I have no intention of selling it. I love it. Gotcha. <laughs> um, so Melody, that was it. Just a couple comments really. Um, I didn't have any issues with anything on here. Okay. Are there any questions from members of the planning board? Doesn't look like there are. So we have a draft procedural resolution. Jim, do you wanna put that up? Um, I, as these have all been posted, I won't read it. Um, we're accepting it. We're classifying it as type two seeker. Scheduling a public hearing, Gretchen. This is going to be when? November 20th. November 20th at 6.45 PM. Delegates, planning board members, who would like to visit? Melody, I'll go. Is that you, Sean? Yes, Sean. Who would like to accompany Sean? 
I'll go with Sean. Okay. And a correction, that's November 15th, sorry. November 15th. Okay. Um, we'll be referring it to the Waterfront Advisory Committee. Uh, we are uh, referring it to HAPAC as it's in the National Landmark District. And we're referring it to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development. Um, all right, could I have a motion to accept the procedural resolution? So moved, Edna. Motion second. Second, Joe. Second, John, Michael, and Joe. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Josh, you'll look forward to hearing from somebody on that team, either Sean or Michael, to schedule the time for a visit. Terrific. Look forward to it. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Uh, next up, Marita Sturkin, 21 Point Street. This is for site plan review and special use permit, the installation of solar panels on the roof. Empire Solar is with us. Yes. Can you hear me? Mm, yep, sort of. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can improve my sound quality. Uh, so we are seeking approval from the planning board for special use and site plan approval to install residential rooftop solar. Reason being because the homeowners, and I do believe that uh, Dana Pullen, one of the homeowners, is joining us this evening. Um, they live in the Rhinecliff Overlay District. So that is why we have to go through the planning board for this process. Would you like to go into any detail to explain your application or? Um, sure. Uh, I mean, it's a fairly standard residential rooftop solar install. We kept the proposed arrays even and symmetrical as possible so that it was not um, unappealing to the neighborhood. Um, we believe that this fits with the climate smart community initiative that Rhinebeck is, um, you know, in support of that clean energy is, is good for the community. So this isn't going to impact uh, traffic or any, uh, you know, it's going to meet all code requirements within the town. The installation is going to be during daylight hours. There's no digging or trenching. There's no runoff into the river. It's a pretty simple project. Okay. Jim, I see you have a couple of comments. Yeah. Um, so really my, um, my only comment, I think, on this, typically uh, we wouldn't see roof-mounted solar except that this is in um, the Rhinecliff overlay. Um, based on taking a look at some aerial imagery and on-the-ground um, you know, reviews of, of what it looks from Google Maps and things, it didn't appear the installation is going to have a negative impact on the neighboring properties. Uh, for the uphill property, it looks like the panels will actually be on the roof um, blocked by that home, and the roof line of this house is actually above the windows of the next house uphill. And for the house downhill, um, there is a um, substantial row of kind of evergreens between this house and the adjacent downhill property, which we thought would help obscure the, the roof line. Uh, so really, we think most of the discussion here is related to design and the look of the panels um, being in the overlay. And a lot of that will just kind of come down to the site visit and any determinations of any concerns there. But I don't see any um, from my review of the plans. Okay. Questions from members of the planning board? Okay, again, we have a draft procedural resolution. Um, the first two items there are the same as the one before, uh, accepting it as a type two seeker, uh, schedules a public hearing on the application for, again, November 15th, Gretchen? Yes. Um, all of these, again, I remind you are at 645. Um, planning board members who would like to make a site visit? I can go. Edna, and who would like to go with Edna? I can go. That's Joe? Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, the rest 
uh, we're referring it to the Waterfront Advisory Committee, we're advising it to HAPAC and to the Department of Planning and Development. Um, could I have a motion to accept the draft procedural resolution? So moved, Edna. Moved, Edna, second. Kathy. Second, Kathy, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, extensions, the motion carries. Uh, the third new application we're looking at, uh, Girl Next Door, LC, Susan C, 19 Grinnell Street, site plan review and special use permit to install solar panels on the roof. Um, and who is here representing who uh, see? Sam Wilo uh, from Sun Common is here. Okay, hi Sam, how are you? Good, how are you today? Good, would you like to share your proposal with the board? Absolutely. So similar to the previous submit, submission, um, this is a solar panel array on a roof in the um, historic overlay district. And ours is slightly smaller. Um, it's 14 panels and they're arranged around um, the current roof conditions of the studio, um, as you can see right there. And um, it's going to be 14 mods, uh, excuse me, panels, 5.32 kilowatts AC, um, or DC, excuse me. And uh, all, uh, there's going to be a, a power wall, a backup battery system inside the house. And we don't um, have much more info to add from the previous applicant. Um, in line with climate goals of the community and, you know, Okay, Jim, I, again, I see you have some comments. Yep, so I did have a, a couple for this one. Um, so in reviewing the, um, the plan that was submitted and actually the image that you see up here on the screen, which is also submitted as part of the application, um, this image is showing three um, skylights on the roof kind of in a row there, as you can see them on the, the left-hand side. And the, um, the plans originally showed four and the layout seemed to kind of surround those four panels uh, or, or those four skylights. There are only three shown here. The, um, the plans seem to show them a little different as well. So I'm just kind of curious if all of that has in fact been accounted for. I'm not sure why that last page is blurry. If that's all been accounted for, if that was taken um, into account after we talked in the pre-app to make sure that the existing conditions are consistent with what's out there. Sure, I remember that very well. Um, we did update the drawings and I believe they were submitted. Um, this drawing set, I can't see the date of the last edit down there at the bottom, but it looks like it's the second edit, which is the correct one. Correct one. Um, and we took those skylights out of this image, it looks like. Right. Yes. Yeah, this was the updated one, but so this does take into account, you have taken into account the, the actual existing conditions, okay. Sort of, we've just eliminated them. Okay, but it will fit though. I guess that's the question is, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other question that I had was just where the, and I don't necessarily remember if we discussed this, I think we did at the pre-con, where the, um, the power is actually going to be used. Is it in the building that the panels are on or was it going to, you know, the, the principal house? Um, and if sure. so, then- we need to see where that line is going to go, whether it's aerial or underground and what that might be. So if you could just explain where the power is being used, that would be great. Absolutely. So there won't be any external power lines. Um, all the energy is, is going to go directly into the studio. Um, so there will be a roof penetration for the solar, um, for the, the, the uh, DC lines to go in. They will interact with an inverter inside the, the house. And then from that inverter, they will be tapped into her existing uh, sub panel. Okay. So we're not installing any overhead or underhead electric lines. It's all contained in or on that building. Okay. Great. And then the last one again, um, you know, within the RCO, typically, you know, with these roof mounted solars, we're looking at the design and potential impact on neighbors. Uh, I believe the applicant actually owns the property to the south, um, which is adjacent to the one that the uh, the roof is facing where the solar panels are going to be installed. To the north, there does appear, appear to be a tree line between this property and the uh, adjacent property. But again, I don't think there are any panels proposed on that one. So I don't think there would have any, be any changes to the existing conditions. So again, I don't know that I see any, any um, visual issues or, or design issues um, 
impacting the neighbors, but the, the site visit will obviously help make sure that that's the case. That was it, Melody. Okay, questions from members of the planning board? Okay, uh, we have another draft procedural resolution looking very much like the others, accepting the application, uh, classifying as a type two seeker, scheduling a public hearing for November 15th at 6.45 p.m. Uh, delegates planning board members. Who's going to Rhinecliff? I'll go. Uh, Michael, is that you? That's me. I'll go with Michael. Um, again, referring it to Waterfront Advisory, or referring it to HAPAC, and referring it to the Dutchess County Department of Planning. Could I have a motion to accept the draft procedural resolution? So moved, Edna. Edna, so moved, second? Second, Kathy. Yeah. Second, uh, Kathy, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, any abstentions? Hearing none, it passes, thank you. Our last new application, Sarah Baldwin and Joseph Fuller, 52 Orchard Drive, site plan review and special use permit for an addition to a single family dwelling. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, who do we have here representing the Baldwin? Uh, Warren is here. Hi, Warren, how are you? And well, how are you? Good, thanks. I think I Tell started. Us what's going on. Okay. So yeah, we're doing a lot in Rhinecliff tonight here, and we um, are. Yeah, pr presently there are no solar panels proposed for this house, but oh, uh, what is <laughs> what is proposed? In fact, it's right across from the the, the first one that's getting solar panels. Um, what is proposed is to. Uh, take an existing garage that faces onto Corning Street and turn it into a, uh, an, an office for um, Sarah's husband, Joseph Fuller. Uh, he's an archivist and uh, the house is, is quite small and there's no extra space to create sort of a library office for him. So that's the plan um, is to turn that, um, the garage, the little building with the gable on the left there, um, get rid of the overhead door that's there and put in a, an entrance from the driveway and the window and then steps down. And so there's a connector proposed, a hyphen, if you will, between the uh, soon to be former garage and the primary residence. And that will take you down a couple of steps past a bathroom and a pantry and then into the dining room. Um, so they're gaining some, the, the pantry space because the kitchen is quite small and there's not a lot of storage. Um, and then they're gaining a ground floor bathroom. Right now there's only one bathroom upstairs and a laundry room as well. Currently the laundry is in the basement. Um, and then uh, this, the new entrance off the driveway. And then um, <clears throat> along with that, um, the hope was to add another parking area just um, up against that, that connector, the hyphen. Uh, met with uh, Highway Superintendent Bob Wyant, uh, discussed the concerns there. Obviously Corning Street is a hill. He's concerned about stormwater as we would be too. Um, he doesn't want it getting in the building, nor do we. Um, and he doesn't want to create a, a problem at the bottom of Corning Street where it meets Orchard. So he uh, proposed that we connect um, by a, an underground uh, drain into the storm sewer that's right at that corner down there of uh, Orchard and Corning Street. Um, there is a tree which is not shown in that rendering, but it sits um, pretty much against the upper retaining wall. Um, we'll save it if we can. It's, it's in okay condition um, and it, it seems to be surviving on the edge of it, what's now just a drop in grade, there is no real retaining wall there, uh, but we're cognizant of the fact that disturbing it at all could um, cause the root system to be damaged and it's something we'll evaluate throughout the, the process. Um, Bob recommended we remove the tree. Um, we might come to that, but not currently the proposal to remove the tree. So even though it doesn't appear in this rendering, um, if the tree can survive and thrive there, then the intent would be to keep it. Is he recommending it come down for site? reasons or? He, he didn't say that. I think he was just, I don't know if he was concerned about the water flow affecting it, um, but okay. right now, again, there is a drop in grade from the current driveway to the, the lawn area immediately to the west of that, and um, the tree seems to be doing okay. And um, you are going to deal with his recommendations about the drain, is that yes. right? 
Yes, we've added a, a drain and a connection underground to the storm drain, as he suggested. Okay, continue. Sorry to interrupt. Sure, that's fine. Um, there, there's some other minor um, modifications within the house. Um, there are a couple of original windows in the house, maybe three of them, on the second floor of the west facade. The uh, proposal is to um, replace the, the later replacement windows in the house, which I think are, are just final one over one windows, with two over two windows to match what were originally there. Um, there were some older photographs submitted, I think, both the one from when the, um, the house was um, documented for the landmark district um, and also you know, just um, some some earlier some some photos that I took there, but but uh, the, the the thought is to make all the windows um, as closely matched the remaining historic windows as possible, energy efficient double pane windows, but two over two with appropriate proportions. Um, that's really the only external change proposed for the house um, at this time. We're going to match the uh, the wood siding that's there, um, and um, you know the, the roof is in reasonably good condition. The new roofing would match what's there. Um, so the sort of minimal, uh, I would say, exterior impact um, on the uh, on the environment there. Okay, um, Jim, I think Warren covered quite a few of your comments, but I think we do need a discussion about the guest room as a bedroom. Yep, Correct? so that's exact, exactly right, Melody. I think Warren covered pretty much everything I had kind of just made a comment on, not really concerns, more comments. Um, the last one being in, in the planning board, you know, we've run into this a couple times already um, recently, the last couple months, uh, with the change in the definition to the code um, for a bedroom that came about because of similar situations to the one we have here in front of us today. Um, I believe that this this um, um, room could be used as a guest room or, or a bedroom. Um, you know, Warren has, I think, I think you put in, you documented Warren in the cover letter that you acknowledge that that could be the case uh, and did take a look at the septic and found that uh, the septic can handle three bedrooms. Uh, there are only two bedrooms currently in the home. So the additional room that's being proposed uh, for this that we're looking at as a potential third bedroom uh, can be handled under the existing, uh, within the existing septic system. So there are no, there, there wouldn't be any concerns there, which is very often what we discuss when we're looking at this. Um, so again, Warren has, you know, and the applicant have acknowledged that that could be used as a, potentially as a bedroom, even though that is not the intended use uh, by the applicant currently. Right, we, we understand that there's always a potential um, and again, that's why when the septic tank was pumped and checked, um, we found that it was indeed um, adequate capacity for three bedrooms, and there are only two bedrooms right now um, upstairs in the house. So as, as long as the planning board members are comfortable with that and the information we've been given, and, and I am, then I think we should be in good shape. Questions from the planning board? I just have a couple. Sure, Edna. Uh, has there been any consideration for removing the blacktop from in front of what was the garage? And um, doing some yeah, I think it's actually gravel. Um, and, and the rendering makes everything look like blacktop. Uh -huh. um, but the, the thought would be for both parking areas to be gravel um, to allow, uh, even though we know that, that Rhinecliff is mostly rock and clay, will allow some natural infiltration of the ground. Um, so that, that was the intention for the, the parking areas. Oh, I see. So it's going to continue to be a parking area. Yes. OK, I didn't understand that. Um, the other question is, is the attic finished in the house? The attic has a very narrow stair that goes up to it. There is sheetrock on the walls. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming there may be insulation up there. Um, but there isn't anything other, I mean, it's, it's um, sort of storage space. And so, so what we are proposing, actually, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, and what we are proposing, because the stair is so narrow and you have to duck your head as you go up to it, it's very awkward right now. It was a retrofit. I suspect originally there was a pull down hatch or something. Um, so we are proposing to, to make it a normal width stair and can change the configuration of the top so you don't have to duck as you arrive at the top landing to get un under the gable, but that's the only plan for the attic. It's just to make it more accessible for storage. They have a lot of books um, and I've advised them they can't store them in the middle of the attic floor. They have to put them around the edges, but, um, but there are no development plans for the attic. Could uh, some photos of the attic be brought? Sure. Any other questions? Yeah, I just have a quick one, Melody. Uh, sure. Warren, how was the capacity of the current septic system determined? Who, who made that determination? 
Uh, the company, I, I actually have a document I can send you. Um, the company that pumped it uh, determined the size based on pumping it. Um, and they're the ones that found that the tank is um, plenty adequate for three bedrooms. Is there any uh, understanding of the area beyond the tanks? Since the tank is usually for holding, but mm -hmm. not for distribution of, of right. waste. Right, so as you know, in Rhinecliffe, um, pretty much nobody, at least in the hamlet of Rhinecliffe, nobody has room for a conventional um, buried system with um, a leaching field. They have seepage pits. Um, and uh, the indication from the, the pumping was that the, the tank was emptying appropriately into one or more seepage pits. Very often um, more added as years go by as the need arises. But that all of that is actually on the south side of the house, um, just kind of along where that, that bay window is uh, under that side. And uh, it's, it's always amazing what can be fit into a uh, lots in Rhinecliffe, but there's no indication of any problem or any history of any problem um, with the field. But there are, there are as is typical, um, no records of um, seepage pits, size, exact location or quantity. Um, it's a case where if something is a problem, then they add another one, but um, the county has no information on that. Is a seepage pit the same thing as a cesspool? Well, not really. The, the tank is where the, the liquid waste goes, and then um, the solids settle, and there is an outlet um, above the bottom, obviously, that allows liquid to go into a pit where it settles. Um, cesspool is kind of an old-fashioned uh, term, and generally, where there's a cesspool, the outlet from the house just goes into that, and it doesn't go any further. So it's kind of like before there was a separate tank and then a, a seepage pit, um, a cesspool was an even more basic system, and that's not what we have here. How does, uh, Melody, do you know, how does Dutchess County Soil and Water deal with Rhinecliff? I do not know. Michael might have some idea. I, I don't know that Dutchess County Soil and Water, it's, it's, I'm more concerned about the health department. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, has, has oh. this been discussed with the health department at all, Warren, to see if they have any, since it is Add, potentially adding a third bedroom, the mm -hmm. tank may have the adequacy, but does the area, which basically then is perhaps the most important part of the system in terms of expansion, mm -hmm. uh, have the actual capacity and the function to uh, handle an additional bedroom? Well, as I say, the county doesn't have any records on these properties in Rhinecliff. Um, and, and even many uh, older properties within th throughout the town of Rhinebeck or the county, um, anything before the 80s, um, pretty much there is no data that they have. And the health department is, I'm just, since you know mm -hmm. Rhinebeck does not have a sanitary code, we depend on the health department right. to tell us right. what is right. and is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And they have no problem with this particular system? They, they normally don't get involved in these applications. Are you, are you, are either of you suggesting that it might be referred to them? I think it might be a discussion just to have to make sure Mm -hmm. They can certainly put in a, a call to call the to uh, yeah. for mm -hmm. You can give a call to Dave Pearson. Yeah. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so rather than actually listing it as a referral, we'll just uh, trust you to contact Dave and get that information to us. Yes. Other comments, questions from the planning board? Anything else, Warren, you want to add? Uh, I don't have anything to add, but I'm happy to answer any other questions. Okay, doesn't look like there are any. So we'll move to the draft procedural resolution. Uh, accepts the application, classifies it as a type two seeker, schedules a public hearing for November 15th at 6.45 p.m. Delegates planning board members. Goodness. I mean, if we all combine, we can go to Rhinecliff all at the same time, <laughs> knock them all off. Um, I'm happy to go. Who will go with me? Is it, it's referred to Haypack, correct? It is, Kathy. Yep. I'll go with you. All right. So Kathy will wear two hats that day. Um, uh, refers it to the Conservation Advisory Board, to the Waterfront Advisory Committee, uh, to Haypack, and to the Department of and development. Uh, can I have a motion? 
So move, Kathy. Move, Kathy. Second, Edna. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Uh, motion carries. Thank you, everybody. I, I have one question. Um, yeah. The next the next meeting is less than thirty days from tonight. So, does that mean that any approvals would be conditional because the thirty day time frame for response from the county has not elapsed? They'll usually answer before the 30 days if we request yeah. it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Gretchen. Okay. Um, we are past 645, so we can now begin our public hearings for this evening. The first, Catherine Whitman, 16 Old Post Road, site plan review, proposed single family dwelling. Good evening. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Catherine. Okay, um, so when we left off with my application, I had presented um, the site plan, the, all the um, setbacks as requested by the ZBA, the privacy fence that was requested Jim, by Jim, the- just a second, I'm letting Jim know that we're still in Rhinecliffe. Yep, I'm, I'm working on getting the file up. Okay, sorry. okay, good. <laughs> I'm sorry, Catherine, continue. Okay, um, the, so, and I had also presented the privacy fence that was requested by the neighbors to the south and the plantings that would go along that. And this is an instance where a third bedroom is intentionally being added to the house. As a result, even though the tank supported the third bedroom, I was asked to go to the Board of Health and take it further and enlist the services of a civil engineer who is proposing, is, is stating that the leach field isn't adequate for the three bedrooms. So we have to add one. He did the deep tests and wrote a letter confirming that the layout will work. It's just he doesn't, he did not prepare his complete civil drawings at this point but he outlined the parameters of what's needed for the leach field, and I indicated that in gray on the site plan here in the front yard. The reserve field, well, there's plenty of room for the reserve field in the backyard. Um, and the next steps can be gone through with the civil engineer um, in the next month or so, but I request that since I've jumped through a lot of hoops for this, that his word in his letter saying he can make the design work with the house where it is, with the fence where it is, is accepted for me to go to the next stage and get the approvals. Anything else, Catherine? No. Jim. Um, so I, I did review the material that uh, the engineer provided um, related to this. And really, I think um, the septic is, is kind of the last remaining outstanding issue. Um, and, you know, if, if, if you look at it, it said the, uh, the engineer is planning to submit the plans to the County Department of Health, um, which we would expect and is obviously going to be done. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But he also suggested, <clears throat> excuse me, that... Um, DEC delineate the boundaries of the wetland and have a topographic survey conducted to verify the site elevations relative to the base flood elevation. Um, those are, I don't know, in my mind, those are kind of substantial requests uh, on the on the um, behalf of the the applicant's engineer. Um, you know, and so you know, it's it's up to the planning board obviously to make the decision. But so there there are a couple <laughs> elements that I think are are still remaining, um, you know, so it's county health approval and then the delineation of these these two elements, the, the wetlands and the base flood elevation. Um, so, you know, I see, I see those as being somewhat significant, uh, but again, I defer to the planning board to discuss kind of where you wanna go with, with us at this time. Um, other than that, I think we've gone through most of the other discussion items and elements. Uh, it's been to the ZBA, it's been through the ZBA. Um, you know, fence permit will be required the fence that's being proposed. Um, but I think that's about it for me. So the variances have been received from the ZBA. Is that correct? 
I believe so. Catherine, can you confirm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, okay, because yeah. I was looking at your fourth note, Jim, and it said will require variances. So I was just making sure they've been received. Yeah, so, you know, so my memo is I put the new stuff on in bold and the old stuff I, I don't take off. Uh, I have Got debated it. changing those old terms if uh, things have changed. I've just kind of left them verbatim for the purposes of carrying them forward. So I apologize for the. No, confusion. I apologize for forgetting that rule. Um, all right, I've opened it up to discussion, the planning board. I think one thing that's important to keep in mind that if the uh, DEC work finds that in any way, shape or form, the property is potentially within the flood fringe overlay, something of that sort, it would then require uh, additional building requirements in terms of getting it above the base flood level, uh, which could change the plans for this building, but also change the plans for the septic system in terms of might need to be fill sections, things of that sort. So. I think at the very least, in fairness to the applicant, before they go down the road of a great deal of planning, they get that information so that they know exactly whether or not they're going to be uh, having to file plans for an area within a flood fringe area. That makes sense to me. So I would, I would interpret those comments to mean that you think we should continue the public hearing. I'm afraid we have to. If their engineer is suggesting it rather than some third party or something, they must feel it's fairly important. Uh, I think that we would be remiss if we didn't. Edna, do you concur? Yes, I do. Comments from other members of the planning board? Okay, any other comments from anyone? This is a public hearing. So uh, Jim, is there anyone here uh, wishing to speak to this application? Just give me one second, I'll see if anyone turns on their screen. I don't see anyone, Melody. Do we have any sense of how long, Catherine, it will take to get these things completed? Um, I'm not sure given how things are just taking longer with everyone right now. Everyone seems to be extremely busy. I'm, uh, I'm a surprised at this decision because the, just the last, um, applicant was in the same situation I'm in where the septic tank was good enough for a three bedroom and ba basically no questions were asked about. Well, they are only at the position and, of being a new application, Catherine. And okay. we learn to follow up with the health department and get us more information. And it'll, I, I think here the issue is that, you know, you're Catherine, your engineer, you know, said that he thinks that it can be done, but also kind of preface that by saying, He's not sure that what's being proposed is necessarily outside of the base flood elevation or um, um, or outside the DEC wetlands. And those are two, you know, you know, moderately significant issues, especially the base flood elevation. Like that could be a big issue. Um, it sounds yeah, to me because like because other applicants had wetlands delineated just off of parcel access tonight. And that was that one, fine. Yeah, that, that one was over 200 feet away from where it was delineated, it's it's well beyond even the hundred foot buffer um, that the town has uh, to provide that protection from those that wetland. Okay, again, I'm going to go said, through was... all the steps. What else can I do? It just uh, I was hoping for a little relief here since I have gotten the engineer working and whatever he advises, I will follow through on. Might be saving you a lot in the long run if we find that it would the site is subject to water right okay and i guess my question cat uh, i'm sorry wanted no go ahead melody go ahead oh i was simply going to ask Catherine if she felt she was ready to have this continued to november 15th or would she prefer to go to december i'd like to shoot for the november but after i get the surveyor um appointment, if it doesn't look like it will be ready, then I will ask Gretchen to put me on the next month. Gretchen, is that all Does right? Does that work? 
If that's okay with you guys. Okay, so this two would go to November 15th? Yes. Everybody okay with this? Yes. Okay, can I have a motion to continue the public hearing to November 15th at 6.45 p.m.? So moved, Edna. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Tensions? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Next, uh, Nick and Irene Buzzell, 54 Pilgrims Progress Road, Site Plan Special Use Permit and Minor Subdivision. Hello. Um, Don Santiago, I'm um, representing Nick and Irene Buzzell uh -huh. from Christina Ducharme Architecture. Um, so just a quick recap of the project. We have an existing um, single family dwelling on this property. Um, we're just looking for a subdivision uh, for three lots, from one lot to three lots. And on the two new lots, uh, lot number three and lot number two, we will be putting uh, new residences and guest house, uh, new septic, et cetera. I believe everyone came out to site uh, from the planning board and there didn't seem to be too many questions or um, other, other items to discuss. On the revised drawings that I submitted on October 4th, I added per the civil engineers um, updated drawings, the proposed well next to the barn on lot two and then updated the locations of the proposed septic and reserve septic on lot number one. Yeah, I think the thing that we need to sort of keep in mind that we're basically doing here is just the subdivision. Um, exactly. The number of the other structures that are being proposed, they would be special use permit, uh, accessory dwellings, things of that sort. So all we're dealing with tonight, as I understand it, is just the subdivision into three lots, one with an existing residence and whatnot and the other two to be two building lots. Exactly. I think the information that's been provided goes to the question of buildability. Yes. Um, Jim, did you wanna make any comments? Um, just one. So, you know, this one uh, last month was when we had a little confusion on uh, and I apologize for that, but moving forward, we will make sure to um, classify properly. So in the, in the meeting notes and things moving forward, I've actually classified this as a minor subdivision uh, and then in parentheses requiring site plan and special use permits so that we don't confuse this as being a more significant um, you know, request. It, it isn't site plan and special use permit for what's on here. As Michael said, it's, that's shown to provide the backup information. Um, so, we, so we will do that moving forward um, to try not have that happen again. So the only thing I added to my notes, I think everything is, um, seems to be in order is that this is for a traditional subdivision um, and that uh, site plan special use permit is required um, because a conservation subdivision is what is required by the code. If you, so if you wanna go through into a traditional subdivision, you need the site plan special use permit element to that. Um, I don't have any concerns with, with what's been shown on the screen. Um, and I think we are in good shape. Could I ask for a report from the folks who made the site visit? Uh, that was Joe and I. I don't know, Joe, if you want to go first. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty straightforward. Uh, it was the subdivision up behind the existing house. Uh, each of the the lots are going to have their own driveways onto Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, heavily wooded area, those beautiful trees, and um, it looked like it was pretty well thought out. And I, I mean, the driveways were long, and it was up in the back of the property didn't really seem like there was any concerns at all. Yeah, I, I would agree with Joe. Uh, it seems like it's well laid out. There are a number of truly magnificent specimen trees, which they're going they're making every effort to preserve. Uh, I, I didn't see any problems either. Um, questions or comments from members of the planning board? <laughs> uh, um, I can Yes, no, this, is, this is Jim. I just want to state for the record, we stated it last time that we did discuss with the applicant um, the fact that they may have to come back in for site plan 
uh, of the actual, you know, homes themselves, and that the proposal that is shown on here for a barn in front of the principal dwelling would require a variance. Uh, so those have been discussed, and, th and that has been put out there just uh, as an FYI. Okay. Jim, is there anyone from the public looking to make any comments? Uh, I don't see anybody, Melody. All right, I think we're, uh, unless someone has anything else to add, I think we can uh, have a motion to close the public hearing. I would like to move we do that. Thank you, Edna, second? Second. Second. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or opposed? Okay, thank you, the motion carries. Um, Jim, we now have a procedural res approval resolution, sorry. Um, and again, it's been posted, so I won't uh, read the whole thing. We're confirming our prior classification uh, and we, including the reports from the site visit, find the proposed work is consistent with the objective stated in chapter 101 and finds that a conventional subdivision is an acceptable design for the site. Um, and then go on to the section page three or section three. Again, I'm not going to read all those. Those are pretty standard. So could I have a motion to accept the draft proposal, uh, approval resolution? So moved, Edna. Thank you, Edna. Second? Second, Joe. John. Second, Joe. Um, all those in favor, oh, I'm gonna poll the board. Uh, let's see, Edna? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Michael? Aye. Sean? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I vote aye. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Have approval. All right. Next up, Christopher and Vicki Stephanopoulos, 129 Way Road, Site Plan Special Use Permit and Minor Subdivision. I assume Mark is here, lurking somewhere. Mark, you, Mark, you muted. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mark Raminsky representing uh, Chris and Vicki Stephanopoulos for a, a three lot minor subdivision uh, located on the north side of Way Road. Um, the total parcel area is uh, just a little under 35 acres. Um, uh, this application uh, creates a, um, <clears throat> a parcel for, um, uh, and it's defined as a uh, lot number one on the plan. Um, that is the existing residence uh, for uh, Chris and Vicki. Um, so, and that has uh, access by its own driveway um, <clears throat> to, the, to the house from Way Road. And then uh, the uh, balance of the subdivision, uh, lots number two and three, um, is to be accessed also off of Way Road, but it will be via a common driveway. And so um, those, those uh, lot, um, a lot two and three parcels, uh, lot number two is about nine and a half acres in size, and lot number three is about 9.7 acres in size. Um, I also note that um, a significant portion of uh, lot two and three is um, uh, uh, there is a, a state wetland, uh, New York State DEC wetland KE23 is uh, located on the uh, westerly portion of those um, along with, and, and this plan shows the associated 100 foot adjacent area um, uh, with, that, uh, with that state wetland. It has been delineated and verified by uh, New York State DEC. Um, also, um, I, sh I uh, would, uh, with regard to the uh, common driveway that's proposed for lot number two and three, uh, that access point was um, reviewed with the, uh, Bob Wyatt, the town highway superintendent, and he has issued a letter uh, approving the location for that common driveway. And then uh, finally, um, with regard to um, feasibility of uh, uh, building a single family residence on lot number two, uh, two and three. Uh, I advanced some test holes uh, that were witnessed by 
uh, Dutchess County Department of Health for on-site uh, sewage disposal. And then also I looked at uh, available records uh, with regard to water supply uh, in the area and uh, submitted a uh, engineer's report to the town, uh, basically stating that I felt that it was feasible to uh, develop um, on-site water supply and sewage disposal systems that would be uh, approvable by the Dutchess County Department of Health for uh, lots number two and three. Um, in addition, you can see on the lower left-hand portion of this, uh, of this map, I've also provided uh, an easement area um, that's uh, associated with uh, the common driveway and then did submit a document or documents uh, for an, a common driveway easement and maintenance agreement along with a parcel description uh, to, to go along with this uh, application. I think that's did it. We, did we talk about uh, the driveway cutting off further up? The, the, the driveway for the parcel on the bottom? Did we? Yes, we did. Yeah, we did because originally, so uh, so uh, uh, Melody and Michael were there for the site visit. When we <clears throat> when first on a pre-application uh, meeting for this, uh, for this property, um, uh, there, it was actually, we were proposing an additional lot. And so then there was a driveway that was going to uh, parallel the boundary line uh, for the adjoiner uh, to the south, who and Donnelly, and so, okay. and so that uh, melody that was eliminated. Okay. Okay. And then I also note that, um, and you know, I had a discussion with Jim earlier today um, with regard to the, um, you know, possible uh, house locations for uh, number two and three. I I note our discussion uh, in the field but didn't uh, feel appropriate to change the map prior to the planning board meeting. Um, okay. It, it was, uh, I spoke to Jim and it can be noted um, in, in discussion or a resolution. Um, uh, okay, got it. Well, then well, maybe Michael and I can give our um, site visit report. Michael, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I think everyone who's driven by here realizes that the views here, basically of the rolling sort of fields and whatnot, it's really quite spectacular. And one of the discussions that we had with Mark out there, because of the topography, would it be possible to move the sites a little bit further over, lower down, so that they'd be less obtrusive to that open view? And I think that's what Mark was just discussing. And he felt that that was certainly feasible. I, I'm assuming that's still correct that and, is uh, that would show up on the final plat um other than that i think we found it was laid out very nicely um it's uh, as mark says there's a great deal of wetlands and buffer and whatnot so it, there's somewhat limited in where you can where you can work but it seemed to me to be a pretty sound plan and i think with the movement of the houses as we discussed in the field uh, i think it can really do a great deal towards preserving the view as people appreciate it now yeah, I would, I would agree with Michael. I mean, what became very obvious when we made the site visit and we were standing at the proposed entrance of the roads is that you really do look back at this sort of up, slight uphill sweep to the two house locations. Um, there's no vegetation between the road and the two house locations. And so we were just, you know, hypothesizing that when the houses were constructed, you would just be looking at two brand new houses on a hill and suggested that moving them back a little bit might soften it. Of course, again, we will say like we did in the one before, this is just for subdivision and there will be chances in the future should people buy the property and come in and propose to build houses to look at the exact location of the house and whether we'd like to see some screening. So that was just the conversation that we had in the field looking to kind of soften it from the road. Um, I, but I think I would agree with Michael that, you know, they're beautiful lots, um, beautiful property, um, and they're nicely laid out. They will work very well. Um, comments or questions from other board members?
Um, public hearing, any comments from the public? Not seeing any melody. Um, I just did want to note, Mark did change the location of the, um, the area of the shared driveway so that it was mm -hmm. just a little more defined with the two properties um, than on the original one. I had asked for that change. Okay. And the only other one would be that this again is a you know proposal for traditional subdivision. Um, so the, uh, the approval resolution that we put together has a one additional language change to it. Uh, just stating if everyone's in agree agreement okay. that a conventional subdivision is acceptable to the site. Okay. Uh, I see no one um, looking to speak. Uh, how, how, Jim, would you like us to handle the conversation about the uh, house locations in the resolution? Do you think that's unnecessary? Um, I, I mean, again, it is a, it is a subdivision. I guess it's it's whatever everyone here is comfortable with. It'll be in the meeting notes. Um, we could put it in as a condition in the in the approval resolution. Um, if, if you want to do it that way and just make it, you know, a condition that uh, the house locations will change to a, a lower elevation. Um, that would just be a simple add if you want would, to do it that way. Or Would this come before the planning board necessarily when the lots are purchased and a house is going to be built? Why would it come before the planning board? It, I don't know. As, I don't know that Way Road is a designated scenic road. Okay. The, so it probably wouldn't. So then maybe yeah. there is a so maybe there is a reason to put something in the resolution. What we've often done is we have sort of designated areas of disturbance or building envelopes or whatever, however you want to put it, on subdivisions, not the specific structures, things like that. But this would be the area where construction would take place. Uh, perhaps something to that effect, uh, where the that yeah. area might I, be. Uh, you know, Edna makes a very valid point, and if we don't see it again for any reason, then I would assume that the way it's drawn here would be where the development zone would be. I guess I'd prefer to see something referencing, we'd like to see that changed. And I think that we can do that um, given our past behavior in terms of areas of disturbance, uh, building envelopes. Okay, Jim. Um, I'm going to take a vote to close the public hearing and give you a minute or so to figure out how we'll adapt the resolution. Okay. Um, Melody, I'm yep. wondering whether Mark Rabinsky has any thoughts on how this could best be done. Okay, say something. Melody? Yeah, well, oh, wait, I, I've got two things going yep. on. Okay. Uh, Edna's I'll asking wait. Mark a question, which I'll, I'll let him answer and then take whatever comments there are. Um, so, uh, answer to this question, can certainly uh, provide a, a building envelope, you know, a, a general building envelope area on, on both the lots. And that, and that, and Edna, that um, also, it will also be driven by, uh, because I did extensive soil testing on the property, and then in consideration of uh, existing drainage patterns, the specific area that I see for development. For example, lot number three, you see where I have the labeling? It says possible house location. So, yeah. there. Um, it needs to go generally in that area or a little, you know, and against um, building envelope line um, that is, um, you know, that meets the current um, uh, side yard setback, excuse me. Um, yeah, the, uh, well, that, that setback line for, um, that's a rear yard setback uh, line for that lot, uh, because the area that I've uh, designated for on-site sewage disposal is located just a little bit to the north of where number three, the number three label is. And you can see that there's a, um, and it's, and, and then if you go to the north from that, there's where the BEE, is is labeled for the building envelope or the or the or the building setback uh, in that area. So um, I think <clears throat> more specifically defining that building envelope, which um, I can do to to uh, to just pull that house site off of the top of the hill, uh, but it's it, it it'll need to be you know somehow uh, developed into the you know the that you know that side hill where it drops down from 
you know, where that labeling is. Uh, with regard to lot number two, there's a few locations that that uh, can go to. Um, I, you know, I, I identified uh, sewage disposal areas uh, located in, in multiple areas for that one. So the same that that um, I, I, I can I think I can provide a, a generous building envelope um, around lot number two that will allow for um, both to um, I guess uh, address the concern that the planning board had um, or, or Mike you know Michael and Melody specifically to drop it off that hill and still be able to um, uh, be able to serve. Uh, be able to have gravity sewer uh, uh, for uh, for that building site. So, so, but we don't have those building envelopes drawn on the site plan now. So, how do we go ahead with this? Um, I guess it would be you know I can put them on, and um, if there's if if it's if the board can tonight agree that it's as long as I show that the envelope is dropped off the top of the hill where I have the houses shown. And it and it's it's an area that's that's shown on the plan on a, on a revised plan that still it it meets the spirit of what Michael and Melody uh, just spoke to and I still meet the requirements of the bulk regulations the you know the current um, the current uh, bulk regulations for setbacks and I and I meet the you know other uh, physical constraints of the property, uh, topography, and in this case, um, wetland, um, I'm hopeful that that would be satisfactory. So I guess I don't still quite understand that. This is the idea that the application might be approved tonight and then the changes made to the site plan and somebody looks at it and says, okay, or how does this work? Yes, that's what I'm hopeful for. But uh, Jim, have you, I mean, can you do this in such a way that it's conditional upon those changes? Yeah, I, I think under, you know, item three on the resolution, we can make a, a, a condition. And again, I'll probably work a language a little bit up before, um, you know, it's final, but something to the effect of we condition approval upon adjusting the disturbance areas or building envelope on both lots to put the, um, to put those disturbance areas at a lower elevation on the plan sheet. Essentially and I'll say as approved by the chair or something. Well, Somebody's that's gonna look at it. what it will be. Um, we're right. basically authorizing Melody to stamp and sign when she feels the conditions have been met uh, in the resolution. And since she also was on <laughs> site and saw what we were hoping Mark would be able to do, I think she'd be in a good position to determine whether or not that's, this particular condition is met. That sounds fine to me. Any other concerns from other planning board members? I believe there was someone else trying to make a comment. Yeah, I think whoever logged in is iPad. Do you want to unmute your line? Okay. Can you hear us? Yes. It's yes. Helen. Yes. Yeah, it's Helen Brown and Alan Klein, and we are next door neighbors to Chris and Vicki. We share a common property line. You actually can see. Klein on the map mm -hmm. and we we do support the board's concerns or um, desire for lower elevation of the houses so that the so that the views are not disturbed and we would also say that way road uh, should be considered a scenic <laughs> road it, it's you can see beautiful views of the Catskills and of the Hudson and it, um, anyway, we support the board's concerns. That's what Thank I was very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, anyone else in the waiting room to speak? If not, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved, Edna. Second. Second, second. second, Sean, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Uh, Jim, do you want to run through the resolution? I'll let you uh, do that since you're in control of it at this point. 
Okay, I can do that. So the uh, the resolution that's on the screen for the Stephanopoulos has um, been posted online. It's a type two under seeker. Uh, we will um, utilize the reports we've heard from planning board members. Uh, we find that the work is consistent with the objectives in chapter 101 subdivision of land and find that a conventional subdivision is an acceptable design for the site. With respect to the minor subdivision, uh, we will approve the application inclusive of the sheet prepared by, that should say Mark Grominski. I will change that. Um, there are actually two references here I'll have to change. Um, we authorize the creation of the two lots, or the three lot subdivision as shown. Authorize the planning board chair to stamp and sign the, uh, um, the plan <clears throat> as non-jurisdictional subdivision uh, with the submission of the specified number of plan sheets, deeds being filed, payment of outstanding fees, and under the condition that uh, that the uh, plans will be updated to adjust the disturbance area or building envelope on both plots so that the houses are shown, shown at a lower elevation on the plan sheet. I have a motion to accept the resolution. So moved, Edna. Second. 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 Okay. Um, all right, call the board. Uh, Edna. Aye. Michael. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Joe. Aye. Sean. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have the next uh, two. Pardon? I have the next two. All right. Well, I'll just announce that Mark is here to talk about Lower Ackert Hook Road Partners, LLC, site plan, special use permit, and minor subdivision. Um, once again, Mark Berminski representing uh, Lower Ackert Hook uh, Partners, LLC. Um, this property is located on the west side of Ackert Hook Road. Its southerly boundary is actually the town of Rhinebeck, the town of Hyde Park, a town line. Uh, the parcel is 29.681 acres in size. It is um, completely wooded um, and vacant right now. Um, uh, with regard to, uh, similar to the last um, uh, minor subdivision application, which I presented, uh, this too has, I've uh, reached out to uh, the town of Rhinebeck Highway Department, uh, the uh, driveway, Access points are shown on this plan, have been approved uh, for uh, driveways by the highway department. Um, this plan uh, shows the, the general area on which um, um, each, of, each of the parcels is being uh, proposed to be developed. A uh, lot number one is the parcel to the north, it's 13.9 uh, acres in size, and lot number two is a southerly uh, piece, which is 15.77 acres in size. Um, in, uh, as with uh, the previous uh, application, uh, I too had, uh, uh, met with the health department and advanced test holes um, for both of these parcels um, that were witnessed by the Dutchess County Department of Health. And uh, in addition to that, did some uh, you know, additional soil testing and a reviewed um, available uh, records for adjoining uh, uh, properties with regard to water supply. And so in that engineer's report, I uh, ultimately, um, I, I, I uh, surmise that um, you could obtain um, Dutchess County Department of Health approval for uh, individual, um, you know, uh, single family individual uh, uh, residents, residences uh, on, on both of these properties. There is, I, you know, I will note there's a, on this, uh, quite a bit to the, uh, to the west of the property is a, uh, is New York State DEC freshwater wetland KE32. I just, I show it as, as reference. Uh, and then also, uh, you can also see with the, um, with the uh, uh, topograph, this topographic map that um, there are, there are some um, steep slopes uh, on the property. Uh, development is being proposed in such a way to uh, avoid those steep slopes with also with, you know, with driveway access and ultimately, you know, development of the, of the residential sites. Um, I think that's it. Um, it um, it's, I think that 
uh, summarizes my presentation. Jim, any comments you'd like to make? Um, nope. Um, we did get a new letter from the highway department, um, as Mark noted, stating the driveway locations were okay, so we are good there. Uh, again, another traditional subdivision, uh, so we have that special note in the um, in the in approval resolution, draft approval resolution, and that's it for me. You made the site visit. Uh, I did in Edna. Okay. Uh, we walked the property, um, heavily wooded. Uh, as Mark suggested or uh, stated, there is a pretty, uh, the driveways uh, upslope on both of the properties or proposed driveways um, where they plan to have the houses uh, takes that into consideration. Uh, the, the back of the property, the opposite side from Ackert Hook is, is there's definitely a, a drop off, but where they're proposing to build their houses seems like the most appropriate place and where they're putting the driveways. But outside of that, there, there's not, there wasn't, it was pretty straightforward. There really wasn't anything to, of much concern. Edna. Besides their snow plowing bill for the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the properties are heavily wooded. Um, the driveway to the south is roughed in already. There is no driveway roughed in for the one to the north. Uh, so it will have to be cut in through the trees. Um, there will be some clearing for the building site. Um, and I don't know, did I mention there are some stone walls close to the road on both proper on both pieces? Uh, one question I had is if, you know, once the driveways are in and the uh, building sites are cleared, is, are there any other plans to remove trees? Um, no, I, I mean, uh, and I just want to, uh, with regard to when uh, Edna referenced driveways roughed in, uh, that, that's sometimes a, a sensitive subject with some uh, work being done prior to approvals. I'll note on lot number two uh, that, the pro that this property was previously logged, and so it was a logging road that was just cleared up uh, for access, because I know there, I had you know, received a call of, that there was some clearing being done on the property. And I just, I just wanted to clarify that. It was, it was that, and then there was a, a meadow area that was part of the logging operation that was also cleaned up near, near, um, um, near Acker Hook Road. So, uh, and uh, with response to uh, additional clearing, uh, I, I, you know, I think it's the intent of, of both, uh, for both lots, for Akron Hook Partners, just you know, clearing necessary for um, you know, obviously the the building sites. And I, I know that we noted that there are some views to the west uh, that may provide um, you know seasonal views of the mountains. And uh, but it's it's been my discussion with both of the partners uh, for this application that you know they're interested in privacy as much as anyone and um you know there may be some uh maybe some minor clearing for views that's it it's there's no intention for uh major tree removal or logging to take place uh i shouldn't say logging uh but you know major tree removal um you know associated with this property yeah that, that was my concern you know significant tree removal to be able to see the views to the west yeah, I don't. Um, I think it's once again they're interested in privacy, also. So, you know, maybe it's some minor clearing to to get seasonal views, and that's it. Any, any other questions? Uh, Jim, uh, anyone from the public? Uh, yes, I have a, a few questions, if I may. Certainly, Doug. My name is Doug Ladno. I live on 624 Akadok Road. Uh, uh, this property to the west uh, uh, of the proposed minor subdivision, um, uh, to the west, uh, it's been our family's name for 73 years, and I've, I've owned it 
own four four acres of it for the last four years. So uh, uh, just let, let you know that. So I, I really have no objections to all this, but I have a question. If I may ask, what is what does a special use permit mean? What's what was that? What does that mean? Jim. Well, there, there, <clears throat> excuse me, there are different levels of review um, that need to be undertaken. So typically, if this was a minor subdivision, um, um, as, a, as a conservation subdivision, which is a different type, it would be looked at as a, as a you know, just a minor subdivision. The special use permit essentially gives the planning board and requires an applicant to go through an additional level of, of kind of review uh, and, and kind of scrutiny in a way uh, to assess not only the, the, you know, the minor subdivision, which is what we're actually looking at here tonight, but some, some more of the details that go along with that minor subdivision. It's just not, it's not just us looking at two lot, lot two, you know, the lot and saying, okay, these are where the lot lines are going to go. It's looking at where's the driveway cut in, where's the house proposed to potentially be located, where are those areas of disturbance, talking about things like tree removal, that kind of thing. Um, so it, it provides the planning board the, the ability to, to get into some more of those details. And that's a requirement that comes out of the zoning code um, for someone that wants to do a traditional subdivision, which is what this is. Okay, thank you. So on lot number one there, is it uh, possible for, for that to, that location of the house to be closer to my property, which would be more west? You, you, you're talking about when it gets to the point of construction? Correct. Well, I believe, Mark, this is where you're proposing the development would be. It is. And so uh, with regard to a driveway for lot number one, that's, it, you know, they, they, the desired um, location for development of a residence is where, sh where it's shown. And so, um, you know, I, the, 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 the driveway alignment choice is based on that. With no intention to go further to the, uh, it, you know, and Doug mentioned that his property was to the west. It's actually to the north, and so um, the northwest. And so there's the the intention is to uh, keep the driveway climbing uphill and not um, and not uh, veer to the to the north or to the west at all. It's that that's that's the intended location of the driveway. It's based the house, on and the house also. Yes, and the house. Yeah, and then that's based on, uh, you know, meeting, you know, driveway requirements from both the town of Rhinebeck and also New York State Building Code. So, the, you know, the goal is to have a driveway that doesn't exceed, you know, ten to twelve percent, and then you know, appropriate pull-offs, things like that. And so this is so, and and I did. Uh, you know, uh, a rough layout of the driveway and to check the grades on it for, for the location for lot number one. Once again, what we can do here is designate these two spots as the building envelopes for the uh, subdivision when it's approved and should any significant change be desired, then I believe the applicant would have to come back before the planning board to modify the final plan. The approved subdivision. I agree. Doug? Hey, well, thank you. I have one last question. Sure. The most, important, most important one. There's no power uh, to these, well, at least lot number one. I'm not so sure about lot number two. There's no power. There, uh, so there, there, there's two ways to get the power. One uh, from 9G which, which was, there's base, I already, I did measurements today. It'd be like 620 feet from, from the poles to the, the first, the first, I guess that's driveway on number two. Cause I, okay, that's what I saw. So then, and if, and it could come the other way from, from my house and that's over 1120 feet, which I don't think such Hudson would do, but I don't know that. And then I'd rather not see poles in front of my house. I've never any, none been here for 73 years. And there's a big estate across, you know, almost a $2 million estate across my house. And there's no poles in front of that ha house either. I mean, I mean, is, is there any way that, um, how do you handle that? I, I'd rather, I think sometimes it's going to come up the shorter way and I hope they do, but I don't know that. I think that's a decision with Central Hudson. Okay, well, 
you know, since I'm an electrician, I deal with Central Hudson, someone will put in a, uh, a 311 form and then, and then, you know, it's not like here, we don't, there's, there's no, there's no discussion over it. They just do what they want to do. And then they, you know, so there's nothing we can do now or nothing we can say now. That's, that's what my big concern is. I don't know of how we could integrate anything about that into our approval resolution. Michael, Jim, am I correct in that? Our, our authority basically is limited to the property itself, uh, right. not the public right of way, uh, issues along those lines. It, it really is Central Hudson's determination how best they want to run lines. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I, I'd, I'll just mention to the board that I will uh, relay Doug's comments and concerns to lower Road Park. Thank you, Mark. Doug, have you had any more comments or questions? I, I guess not. Anyone else from the public, Jim? Uh, no, Melanie, not seeing anyone else. Right. Uh, is everybody happy on the planning board to close the public hearing? I make move that we do it. Motion from Edna, second. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, Jim, we have a resolution, I believe. We do. Uh, same resolution as the previous one, um, with unfortunately the same holdover in the typo, but I will take care of that. Um, essentially reaffirming this as a type two under seeker, um, uh, stating that we have reviewed all the submitted information, including reports from the planning board member site visit, and that the planning board finds that a conventional subdivision is an acceptable design for the site. We're going to approve the application, inclusive of the plan sheet prepared by Mark Graminski, uh, authorize the planning board chair to stamp and sign the plan as required uh, under sub items 3C1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, could I have a motion to approve the resolution? Um, second, with just a comment, do you want to add something about uh, with the building envelopes as shown on the site plans? I mean, I'd consider that to be part of the review and that's why we do the site plan and special use permit element of this, but I, I defer certainly to, to others, the planning board members on that. If you think we need something specific in the resolution. Well, again, to designate them. Well, once once it's approved, then individual owners go to get a building permit. And I don't think the planning board Correct. sees anything. Only under a special condition, yeah. Michael, you had a comment? Yeah, I think that Mark agreed that the sites that he has shown here will be the building envelope areas. Um, that that will be the ones and that when it comes to you to stamp and sign, you'll be able to verify exactly what's on the final plat before you stamp and sign. I just want to note for both of those, I'm also going to include, when we say building envelope, I'm, I'm also going to include areas that I need for, you know, that I anticipate for uh, sewage disposal areas, because that's, you know, yes. that's part that, of- That would be part of the area of the building envelope. And, and so, just a question, Michael, and well, for the rest of the board also, some of those areas are going to extend past, you know, the actual setback lines for the building. Um, and so I'll somehow, you know, I'll, I'll differentiate between that. I, I don't want to indicate that we're going to, um, you know, not meet building setbacks. I'll be specific with in that where, you know, like structures will go and then where you know, development is 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 going to you know be needed for on-site sewage disposal. Like for example, on you know on this on this property for lot number two, you know I think that a more suitable sewage disposal area. Um, you know, there's one near near the house site, but then there's also another one that I located. That's if if you look between the um, 470 and 475 contour, almost due east towards Ackerhook Road. You can see where the contours widen out. It's a flatter area. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. 
you know, that's a good location for sewage disposal. So I want to include that also uh, in there. And the same thing, you know, for parcel one, I had, you know, locations to both to the, you know, both to the north and to the south um, on that. So I'm, I'm going to include, you know, those areas in, in the development, you know, in the development envelopes. Okay. All right. Um, I think I was at the point of asking for an approve um, to accept the resolution. I think Edna had made the initial motion. Okay, Edna, unless there's, I, unless there's I just a question, Edna. Yeah, I, go, I uh, move that we accept it. Okay, second, please. Second, Joe. Second, Joe. Um, let me pull the board. Edna. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Michael. Aye. Joe. Aye. Sean. Sean. Uh, I vote aye. Sean um, said I, we just couldn't hear him. I saw him okay. say I though. <laughs> I don't okay. know why Sean, we're not hearing you. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes. Now we can. Okay, great. I said I. Thank you, Sean. Uh, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Thank the you. last public, public hearing for this evening, Rugies 3718 Route 9G, Site Plan and Special Use Permit Modification of Existing Building and a Plan to New Building and Additions. Mark. So I think uh, so. Uh, I think I'll have uh, Seth. Seth Dickel, as you know, works with me, um, and uh, I think I'll have Seth present this one. We uh, had, uh, and so we prepared a just a PowerPoint to you know take take the board through this. And so, um, Seth, why don't you take it away? Let's see, is Seth muted? Seth? He's there. He's there. There, Seth, I'm gonna ask you to unmute, see if that works. He's, he's lost in the ether. <laughs> no, he's un Seth's unmuted, I'm not sure. What's going on? Well, are you able to start, Mark? Yes, I am. Thank you. So, uh, okay, so uh, here's just uh, Jim. You, you know, this is our you know opening slide. You know, phase development for um, uh, for Rugies. Um, you know, so phase one is the and it's it's a, a total of a and I'll, I'll keep this. Uh, you know, brief for the board. We're the last one, and we've gone through this a few times. So, if you need me to go back on anything, please just um, feel free to speak up, and I'll just try to take uh, take you through the, um, you know, the. And this is for the also in case there's uh, people that are on this meeting that have not. This is the first time they're looking at the project. So, phase. This is a three phase development approach. Phase one is the relocation of the uh, motor vehicle repair and service operations from the village uh, location to the site. Um, it also, in, to, to do that, it requires site plan special uh, permit review, which has been ongoing. And so that, and so that initial phase, phase one, is uh, basically, re, um, it's, it's the, uh, the, the reuse of the existing stamp uh, manufacturing facility, um, you know, for um, you know, for the operation of of moving uh, Subaru uh, to that location, and there will be some associated uh, site improvements uh, with that, along with site improvements on site, and also um, importantly, uh, you know, changes to uh, New York State Route 9G. The specific phase is only for entrance. And it's you know, location of the entrance, uh, configuration of the entrance, and some uh, site uh, site line clearing that's required for the entrance. Also, uh, phase two: uh, Rugies Dodge Jeep Ram and Rugies Ford 
uh, location. So uh, located further to the um, uh, to the east of, of the you know the, of where the uh, phase is going to take place is where the existing building is is where phase two uh, will occur. And so um, it's relocation of motor vehicle repair and service operations. Uh, from the uh, town location. So those obvious, lo obvious locations are where Jeep Subaru uh, Chrysler is located at the 99G intersection. And then obviously uh, uh, Ruggie's Ford uh, located uh, just a little bit uh, to the south of this on the Southwest uh, on uh, Route 9G. A site plan and special permit uh, details to be provided in a separate application at the time of development. So that's not included with this application. And then phase three is uh, basically the development of the balance of the site. So this, uh, this, you know, this total, uh, the total uh, area of this uh, property is, if you zoom in, I know, you know, it's, I think it's, it's 130 some odd acres of property. And so, um, you know, development of these two, um, these two alternatives, uh, phase one and phase two is about 14 to 15 acres, somewhere in, somewhere in that size. And so the balance phase three is to occur um, uh, on, the on, on the balance of the property. So it's, it's all development per the uh, ORP zoning district. And then obviously with that uh, site plan, special use permit details to be provided in a separate application at the time of development. Uh, okay, Jim, we can go to the next slide. Seth, are you back with us yet? I just shot him a message in the chat. He's still trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. I think okay. he may log out and log back in, see if he can get back okay. online. I'm not sure. Okay, so phase one. Um, so I mentioned that it's a site plan special permit. And in this case, it's uh, also wetlands permit application. Uh, that That's the um, one of the uh, permit changes uh, that has occurred since our last meeting with the planning board. And that is, uh, so located on the property are both um, state and federal wetlands. And so this wetland permit application that I'm referring to is town only. And so then you can see uh, noted underneath that, the wetland permit is for underground utility installation. It's basically light poles are being proposed um, along the entryway, the main entryway into, uh, in, into the property, into the building. And so it's, there's just a small portion uh, that will require a, a wetland permit consideration by the town of Rhinebeck. Secondly, uh, New York State DOT. So I, I briefly mentioned that in my introduction. So currently there's a highway work permit application um, for a minor, minor commercial entrance that is being undertaken by uh, a traffic consultant that's been uh, retained by Rugies and is coordinating with my office. And so that is, uh, is reconfiguring uh, the existing entrance. Um, you know, everyone like, so currently it's, it's a triangular type uh, entrance at, um, at, at 9G for, for the property which does not conform to current uh, New York State D DOT standards. So for phase one, um, we're providing, we're going to provide a New York State DOT approved entrance. Um, uh, you know, that is, that is part of a uh, overall um, uh, um, a, a DOT plan for the property. And, and so it's, it's the first phase, it's the entrance. I'll just note at this time, you know, uh, as as the as the project progresses with addition, well, specifically with phase two, more work will be required on uh, on New York State Route 9G in the form of turn lane. Um, but that is that is to you know that too is being phased. So the work with uh, DOT is being phased first with the entrance, um, new entrance to be provided. Um, without uh, having to construct the turn lane. Phase two will actually require construction of the turn lane. Uh, but this new reconfigured entrance will be part of, will be with phase one. And in, in doing that, in, in reconfiguring 
uh, the entrance, which we're actually making smaller um, uh, so that, um, and, and I note that there's a, uh, a state wetland uh, located uh, to, to the wet, to, excuse me, to the, uh, to the east of it, um, that the 100 foot adjacent area extends into the, into the area that we're going to be reconfigured. So that's going to require uh, application to uh, the New York State uh, DEC for uh, disturbance within the 100 foot adjacent area um, of a wetland. That specific application hasn't been made yet since we're uh, waiting for uh, the traffic consultants and engineers to, um, to finalize all the design work related to the entrance and, and, and actually also to the turn lane. So then one application can be made to the DEC uh, with regard to that. And, it's, and once again, it's strictly a disturbance within the 100 foot adjacent area. And once again, we're, we are, uh, in this case, I believe we're, uh, it's, it's less impact on the adjacent area. So I think uh, we're looking forward to a favorable uh, application with New York State DEC. Next, it's uh, Dutchess County Department of Health. So uh, water supply and wastewater disposal uh, system application of, uh, to Dutchess County Department of Health. Um, part of this application um, met with the, uh, the health department on site, advanced some test holes, again, uh, for uh, you know, uh, finding a, a location for the ability for on-site sewage disposal, uh, successful in doing that. And so it's uh, development of the plans for, um, uh, for the uh, sewage disposal system, and then also um, uh, development of the water supply. It now becomes uh, a public water supply uh, as defined by New York State uh, Health Department and also Dutchess County Department of Health. And then, uh, and then, and so then all, um, you know, improvements and upgrade facilities to current standards for the water supply and wastewater disposal. And then finally, a town board, um, you know, at the, we've talked about this quite a bit that, uh, you know, that um, needed uh, approval from the town board to proceed with a phased approach uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier. And so that was that approval was adopted by resolution on September 13th uh, of this year by the town board, and then um, and it and and with that it uh, restated amended agreement with you know with with certain conditions that were uh, outlined in that agreement in, in in that agreement. Um, next slide, Jim. So as part of this, um, you know, ongoing application, um, prepared, um, you know, my office prepared plans. It's sheet one through eight that uh, that outlines, you know, site plan details with uh, drainage and utilities, uh, health department, water supply, and wastewater disposal details, uh, landscaping with uh, traffic and directional and signage details, and lighting plan details. And then also, um, you know, the architectural consultant uh, involved in the project, uh, Stuyvesant, um, uh, Stuyvesant pr provided updated floor plans, detailed uh, exterior elevations with materials and photo, uh, photo realistic rendering. And then I, I also, I just note here that, you know, although we show some, uh, you know, signage and directional signs and uh, the applicant proposes a separate and independent application for all signage. And then I also know, uh, had a conversation with Jim earlier today that took care of it, that um, uh, uh, for this application, that we're going to note that no backlit signs uh, are, will, will, will be proposed for the project. Uh, next slide, please. And so these are the engineering plans that were, that my office prepared, um, you know, very uh, similar to this. This is just, you know, sheet one. These are the existing conditions. We've, you know, gone, gone over 
uh, multiple times, just um, you know, providing you know information on the you know existing access. You know, I've mentioned wetlands, both uh, core and uh, state, uh, shows the location of the existing stamp facility, and then uh, you know existing conditions, parking, et cetera, uh, tree lines, um, and uh, you know all, all other. Uh, improvements associated, current improvements associated with the site. Uh, next sheet, please, Jim. Um, Seth, are you there? Uh, can anybody hear me? Yeah, there you go. Take it over, a Seth. Couple tries. Yep. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, so yeah, sheet two is, uh, is the phasing plan. Um, we provide a substantial narrative uh, regarding uh, phase one, uh, phase two, and phase three. Um, this was briefly covered in the uh, introduction uh, proposal, so uh, we can uh, go to the next slide, Jim, if that would be okay. Um, unless anyone has any questions on phasing um, at this point, but we can, we can hold that. Um, uh, we prepared a detailed site plan, um, which includes um, a lot of design elements. Uh, that we have thought through um, both uh, exterior of the building as well as connections in the interior of the building. Um, as Mark had mentioned, we we're going to be proposing a uh, potable water supply well um, uh, for public use. Um, so that is an existing well and an existing well vault that would be up in what is the northwest corner of the property. Um, uh, that is an existing water service that enters the building at the location that's shown. Um, uh, out of the uh, north end of the building, we'll be proposing a septic tank and a um, pump chamber that will be feeding the uh, sanitary disposal system to the north. Um, uh, specifically, uh, we outline here all of the light poles, uh, as well as the electrical lines that will be run. Um, uh, the uh, light poles that will be run around the outside of the service drive, there are, they are spaced approximately 200 feet apart um, and set at mounted 15 feet with fixture heights. Um, we uh, are also, uh, those, those are noted here, there are more details of those also um, on the next sheet. Um, here, here we are also showing uh, what is the concept for uh, stormwater management on the site. Um, we are looking to collect uh, stormwater through sheet flow and disconnection of the rooftops. As we know, the existing building is uh, almost 40,000 40, uh, square feet. We're removing a portion of that, so we're reducing the size, but we're also adding a little bit to the, to the building mass itself. Um, so uh, in, in net across the entire site, we're uh, uh, adding somewhere in the neighborhood. It, it has evolved just a little bit since our original conversation, which was about 6,000 square feet of hard surface area to somewhere between six and 8,000 square feet of hard surface area now. Um, most of that is existing parking area. And what we're doing in that, uh, Jim, if you could just scroll over to the east a little bit to the right. Um, what we're doing in that parking area is we're using um, what are uh, uh, islands and we're using those as depressed islands so that we can collect that uh, initial runoff, um, that first flush runoff and, and use some um, planting material as well as some amended soils in that area to uh, use biological uptake and nutrient removal so that we can treat the stormwater before we discharge it into our stormwater collection system. Um, so that is a fairly consistent application across this whole, this whole area. Um, one thing I'd just like to point out, if we could just zoom out a little bit again, Jim, thank you. Um, this parking area um, is proposed not to be striped with the exception of the one area that's immediately east of, of the uh, building. There will be a, a, a strip of, of um, uh, parking there that will be striped. The parking that's in the, in the front of the building to the south of the building is, is where all of the customers, guests, or anyone else would, would come to the site. Every, everyone else who uses the back parking area will be a Rudy's employee who knows what's going on back there. So um, we're only proposing striping in the front portion of the building. Um, uh, I, I think that covers most of the uh, site plans. There are some additional utilities. Um, I, actually, I think I need to speak to just one um, uh, additional 
uh, element for the utilities. That is, um, we're looking to use a Highland tank um, because of, of the nature of the proposed use here um, being an automotive service facility. Um, when we have lifts and we have some floor drains and other things interior in the building, we're going to be collecting all of that water, directing it into uh, essentially an oil water separator uh, that's uh, constructed by Highland Tanks, and that is actually shown just out of the east of the building, located in, uh, in, in uh, the dry aisle there. And that tank will be underground and uh, will be serviceable, and it will provide that um, in the event that, let's say, you know, we have a heavy snowfall and you're bringing in cars that are, um, you know, uh, some material water is coming off of them, that will collect and treat that before it's discharged into our stormwater system. So that was just important to note. Um, uh, the most part, uh, all of the ingress and egress for what would be customers versus um, employees we've discussed in, in some great detail. If anyone would like to talk about them more, we can certainly do that. Um, but that's most of the site plan um, details um, at this point. Uh, so we can move to the next drawing. Just going to note uh, briefly, Mark had discussed this a little bit. Um, he had you know, worked with the health department uh, regarding uh, locating some areas that would be potential for sanitary disposal systems. And we've come up with a conceptual design here. This would be to the north uh, and an open field along the edge of the wooded area. This is where it's proposed. So not looking to disturb um, you know, woods or in any way, it's mostly in the field. Um, uh, obviously, we're doing that so that we can uh, accommodate the new proposed use and bring things up to today's standards. Um, so I, we can go to the next slide. Um, an erosion and sediment control plan has also been included. Um, we will um, probably be adding just a little bit more detail um, as well. Um, but the, this is a, you know, a standard erosion and sediment control plan, which is part of the stormwater pollution prevention plan um, that we are preparing for this project. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, this is a, a landscaping plan. Um, uh, for anybody who's been out to the site, you'd notice that the mostly the, the uh, buffer around the entire property is wooded. Um, well over 200 feet of it. Um, so we're looking to use a natural um, landscaping as much as possible. So we'll maintain all of that buffer on the perimeter of the property and enhance it as, as possible. Interior to the site, we're focusing most of the landscaping um, uh, to um, the benefit of the stormwater management. So for the most part, these, uh, the, uh, storm, the plantings are within the stormwater management areas. They're uh, plant materials that um, are um, susceptible to inundation and grow in, in, a, in a, a place like that. Um, and uh, mostly just low cover um, uh, grasses, you know, things of that nature um, with a few trees scattered throughout the site as well. Um, and really that's the, the softening that we're looking to, to do with landscaping um, in the interior uh, of, of the site. Um, not substantial areas of plantings, um, mostly just a few trees and, and like I said, concentrated in those stormwater management areas will be stormwater plantings. Um, we can go to the next slide, Jim. And as I had mentioned previously, we've also developed a lighting plan. Um, due to the, the type of use here and the time frame of hours of operation, obviously it does get dark a little bit earlier, especially this time of year. So we're going to need to uh, accommodate lighting on the site. Um, the entrance drive currently does not have uh, a lighting, so we will be accommodating that. The, first section, which is actually the uh, adjacent to Route 9G, will be pole spacing of 100 feet for safety and security. That, that's a, right there where Jim's cursor is. And that leads up to the Y where the drive splits off and the customers go to the front of the building. So we're getting customers with uh, the most adequate light possible to get safely from the roadway up into the, the, the building. Uh, for the uh, remainder of the access drive, the service drive that loops around the property, we're uh, widening that spacing so that we can provide enough adequate light for safety, but not as intensive a lighting 
Um, and we did that with, with you know, intentionally. Um, and uh, all of those lights will be on uh, timers and they will be uh, on during hours of operation when needed and they will be uh, motion censored for anything that is a delivery after hours. Um, there are some delivery trucks, uh, for instance, for parts or for vehicle delivery that do come in either at off peak morning hours or off peak evening hours uh, where it could be darker. So we need to accommodate some lighting for that. We've done our best to use as much building mounted exterior lighting as possible so that we could eliminate the number of poles necessary and also just be um, conscious of the dark skies uh, requirements and in consideration of that. Um, uh, we worked with the lighting uh, contractor to, uh, to meet the goals, uh, 15 foot uh, pole mounting fixture heights and building mounted fixture heights, um, as well as the uh, requirements for uh, foot candles and, and other um, details that are noted in the zoning code. Um, uh, there are also some uh, light poles just to in the main parking area, the inventory parking area, which is just off to the east. Um, if we could go to the next slide, um, which is just our standard details. Um, so uh, that that does it for our, our engineering plans for the site plan set. And uh, moving on, uh, there are some details for the architectural plans. I'm not sure if the yep. architect Ken is with us. Yep, I am. Thanks, Seth. Uh, my name is Ken Syverson with Syverson Medusa Architects. Um, so Seth gave everybody a pretty good overview as to how the building is being used. Uh, as you can see, we're uh, renovating the existing stamp building, which is approximately 20,500 square feet for some new uh, service for the Subaru dealership. And then we have some quick lube behind the racks and some storage components. And then on the south side, where we removed some of the other um, existing buildings, we are creating the new service drive, which is approximately 5,200 square feet with a small office space above it for uh, you know billing and invoicing and files and records and all those types of things. So then we can go to the next page where you can get to see that small uh, second story. I'm just trying to, because the, you know, the sand building is about 24, 26 feet high, we're just taking advantage of that so that, you know, the service drive's not dwarfed. And, you know, instead of having footprint on the grade, we just went out as a more economical and better use of the site. And the next page, we have some of our proposed materials. So we have, um, you can see the original stamp building will be uh, painting the brick to make, match some Subaru standard colors that the uh, manufacturer requires. But then we have on our new, so that's pretty much the existing building as it exists with windows and things along those lines, minus some new uh, openings for uh, doorways for the overhead doors and stuff like that. Um, and then on the right hand side of that, you can see that we have the service drive edition, which we've used more uh, contempt, uh, more traditional architecture to complement the existing building. So we have some field stone bases, we have some board and batten siding, and then uh, some lap siding uh, as well. And you should note that you can't even see this building from the road, just so, just so that if you're curious, we're so far back there and it's up over a ridge. But anyway, we are doing all those things. And then if you go to the last page, you can kind of see how uh, you know, originally we thought we might be going on at 6.30, it'd be twilight, so we thought we could give you guys uh, a little bit of a view as to how the, the project would look right around twilight. Uh, and as everybody has mentioned, we don't have um, self-illuminated signs. Um, that the manufacturer would like to see those, but I don't think we're gonna be pursuing those. And there you, and there you get to see what the project's gonna look like when we're done. Okay, thank you, Mark. Anything else you want to say in summary? Um, no, I, I'll, I'll keep it, you know, keep it short for, for the board. Okay. But certainly, any now, questions the board has. Yeah, um, but obviously, site visits have taken place a long time ago, so we don't have any current uh, reports relative to that. Um, I would open it up to questions from the planning board.
My goodness. I don't have any questions. I, I did do the site visit. And I know I reported on it previously. Um, I, I think it's a pretty thought out plan overall and it's a good use of the property. Um, I think they've supplied a significant amount of information um, through the different phases. And at this point, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with what they're looking to do. And I guess I'll just share that. Okay, other planning board members wish to comment? Jim, any comments you'd like to make? Um, just a couple. Um, first of all, I'm thrilled to see you're using best management practices for the stormwater. I, I love to see that. That's that's fantastic. Um, I think that's really important and vitally important that we do as much of that as we can um, on the projects in the town to try and help filter out, uh, you know, road salt and dirt and that kind of thing uh, naturally. So thank you for that. Um, I had noted in my memo that it looked like the signs were internally illuminated. We've been told that won't happen and signage will come in under a a separate application. So I think that takes care of, of that note that I had. Uh, the only other comment I had that's come up is kind of new, I guess, um, is just related to phase three uh, and the phasing plan. It's now including, um, I know that there's a proposal to develop a five megawatt community solar installation in phase three, um, which I just wanted to note for the record so that everybody is aware that that is, uh, that's now in the, in the phase three. That's it, Melody. Uh, that's all I, Okay, is there uh, anyone from the public on the call looking to make a comment? Um, all right. I want to thank you for a very comprehensive and well thought out application. I know it's taken a while to get here, uh, but I think the absence of questions attest to how thorough you've been in presenting the information. So we thank you for that. And I know it took a little time to present it tonight, but you know, I thought it was important to go over it again so that everybody on the planning board seems satisfied. Um, if there are no uh, comments or questions and nothing from the public, I think we're at the point of closing the public hearing. Could I have such a motion? We'll move, Sean. Sean, second. Talking Joe. Thank you, Joe. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Um, I would love then to uh, present you with this draft approval resolution, reaffirming the classification type two seeker. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong page, sorry. Jim, what page am I? I'm supposed to be on. Here it is. 24. Yep. Um, reaffirms the proposed action is on listed seeker for which coordinated environmental review is precluded. Um, it's consistent with the objectives and regulations of Chapter 125. Uh, finds the proposed work and interviews to be consistent with the general standards. Grants the requested special use permit conditional upon receipt of the site plan by the planning board, site plan approval. Uh, finds the proposed work to be consistent with Town Code Chapter 125. Um, here in reference to the agreement between the applicant and the Town of Rhinebeck Town Board, authorizes the Planning Board champ, uh, Chair to stamp and sign. I think that pretty much covers it. I have uh, one question, Melody. Sorry, yep. this is Jim. Um, the only question I have is if we wanted to put in here just an additional statement that we approve the plan without signage, understanding that signage will be submitted uh, for a separate review just because we did have signage shown in the plans. I thought it was appropriate to. Okay, that. where would you put, where would you put it, Jim? Um, I was just gonna maybe make it as letter C under number four, just to say we approve the plan without signage, understanding that will be reviewed separately for approval. Okay, and then C becomes D? Right. Okay, uh, everybody clear with that? Everybody good? Okay, could I then have a motion to accept the approval resolution with that change that Jim is recommending. So move, Sean. Motion by Sean, second. Edna, second. Second. By, second by Edna and I uh, will pull the board. Edna? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Michael? Aye. Joe? Aye. Sean? Aye. And I vote aye. 
And I think I saw Scott on earlier. Are you still here, Scott? On, on behalf of uh, Ruggie's Automotive, we thank you all for all your work. Well, and we thank you all for your hard work. So good luck. I'll get in thank there, you. sign things, and, and you're ready to just go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else to come before the planning board? I don't see anything. Well, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any opposed to adjourning? Didn't think so. All right, everybody, take care, be well, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Good night. Good night.